Hey guys, Zach with Wired Customs. Welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to finish up that Haywire wiring harness. We're going to do uh, a couple things here. I'm going to show you how easy it is. The steering column, wiring it up, high and low beam switch, headlight switches. Uh, then real quickly, I'm going to explain how you run the tail lights and the headlights. Okay, so now it's time to hook up our dimmer switch. Of course, we're gonna put a new one in. The old one bolted in from the outside, which a lot of the old ones do. The new ones bolt in from the inside. What I really like about Haywire's connection here is that this just simply plugs into the harness. There is no wiring here. We're just plugging in, plugging in, that's it. But what's awesome is that their connector for the high low beam switch here actually bolts through the floor with the high low beam switch itself. So you can see here, it's gonna bolt the whole connector down so this is underneath the carpet. For some reason this gets kicked or pushed on a little bit or you're trying to turn around and reverse it and you put your foot down, it's not going to pull the connector off from the high, low, high and low beam switch. So I think this is a great idea. This is gonna work out really well. All right, let's do some uh, easy connections here. So we did the high low beam on the floor. That was simple, just plug in, plug in, boom, that's ready to go. Now we're gonna do the uh, headlight switch. The only difference here is my old headlight switch Where's it at? Uh, it's not going to work. All this crazy wasp nest. And uh, I definitely suggest to replace every single switch that you possibly can. There is some instances where it's a really weird, unique switch uh, that you can't, you, know, you just got either try to find one that's in better condition or use what you got. So um, make that judgment yourself. But I am putting a new switch in. This switch came from Haywire. So it's just gonna plug right into the harness. So this connection is gonna be very simple. As simple as just plugging it in. So that's plugged in. And to get it to fit in here, we have this knob that's gonna screw through the dash. I had to drill out a hole here where the original headlight switch was. I'd rather have the headlight switch on the outside. So if you're driving it, it's the easier button to get to. Hopefully when they put that GM column, it'd be a little bit smaller steering wheel. It'd be a little bit easier to get to the switch on the inside, but this cutout here is notched for, where's that? For my throttle knob, and it has a notch here so the knob doesn't spin. And even though we're probably not going to use this anymore, this might turn into a choke or it might get cut off the back and not be used at all. But the knob is still going to fill the hole in the dash. So I wanted to switch them around, but you know I didn't really have an option. This, this would end up spinning probably, so. Or put it on the inside, not a big deal. So all I have to do now is put this switch up in the dash, screw this in, and our headlight switch is done. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, luckily for me, I did some grinding here on my knob, and now this old knob is going to work. So we will have the old school headlight switch still working, the old labeled knob still usable. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's wire up the Speedo, our gauges and everything. This is fairly simple. What I love is that Haywire has this connector here. So depending on what type of gauges you're running, you have a connector here and you can hardwire all these directly to the gauges. Now I'm using like modern electric style gauges. So uh, they come with their own connector in the back, which is nice. And all their wire colors are different. So really all I have to do here is read the labels like oil sending and find the old sending wire on my gauge side and connect the two. Now you have a bunch of different options. I never tell anybody what to do, look it up, figure out what's best for you, but I'm fine with these little crimps here. We can crimp all this in since we have a connector back here. We can unplug this and we have a lot of length of wire to pull these gauges into your lap and work on it and diagnose it later. And I am fine with these crimps because they crimp the wires down and it also has a built-in heat shrink then you shrink it back down. The downside is if you put too hard of a crimp in here, you'll break through the heat shrink. And when you go to heat shrink it, you'll actually have steel. So watch out for that. And whenever you're crimping anything ever, crimp it and give it a good tug, to make sure uh, it's not going to pull apart on itself. So a bad crimp could be an issue later down the road where they'll pull out from one another. So I check every single one right after I crimp it, then I heat shrink it down and that really locks it in a place better. Or you could use the two stage where it's just the steel crimps, then you slide heat shrink over that 
and uh, shrink that up. I do that style on the custom cars. When I say custom cars, it's the extra charge of where I'm really, really trying to hide all the wires in the engine compartment. I'm trying to hide all the wires in the entire car and that charges more, takes more time. That's when I do the uh, crimp, then the black heat shrink over. Uh, some guys prefer soldering. That's up to you if you like that better or not. I did that for a very long time. So I started out soldering before I ever knew what a butt crimp was. And uh, I slowly moved over to these butt crimps just because I have no issues with them. Um, they shrink up and seal awesome. Uh, uh, they keep moisture out because they have heat shrink over them, of course. But I just never had any problem with them. And they're like cheaper and faster and they work just as good. So I prefer crimps, but like I said to you guys, make your best choice or what you think's the best for your build. So uh, I have everything wired up here. A couple of these share the same wire, which is not a big deal. One is instrument lights, which each gauge has its own set of lights. So it's shared here, uh, shared ground for all the gauges. Pretty typical. Um, what else is shared? I think that's it. Oh, and ignition. Ignition is shared between the two. So ignition comes in, splits into the two. That's super common. Now what I have is a couple extra wires, and this is what I always do. Um, when I'm winding up a car and I have these extra wires. So uh, I do not have the engine and transmission here. I'm just wiring it up and sending it out and they're putting the engine and transmission themselves. So what I did here was label the speedo wire. All we need is electric pulse wire hooked up to this. Boom, and the speedo is going to work. It has a program, programmable speedo. And I put the button right here. See if you can see that. This is how you're going to program it. This little button right there at the corner of the dash. Pretty nice. So you, we can program the electric pulse to be the right speed, but you need to be following another car with an accurate speedo in the first place. But it's one of the ones I like. But what I do here with my extra wires, stuff I'm not going to use. We have an hour meter, so you can see how many hours a car has ran. Uh, I don't know, I don't really need that. I don't use that, but it's here. Uh, then we have an alarm, so you key on, eh, alarm. Uh, I don't ever use that either. The hot rodders are usually pretty good guys you can see if your lights are on or something like that so we just don't use that and uh, I label them all with just some tape they're all labeled speedo hour meter alarm so you don't have to find your instructions that you might possibly lose at some point in time whatever is not used gets these uh, labels just simple tape and sharpie and it gets put up in the dash now everything that's not being used I do like to put it in its own loom and I always, instead of using zip ties, I put cloth around it. That has nothing to do with anything other than if I come back to this car, a customer brings me a car five years later and they want like a tachometer. This car is not going to have a tachometer for now. There's no tachometer in our setup, but five years from now, hey, I want a tachometer. I already know I need to look for my loom that I tape up with my fabric tape like that. And it's all, uh, uh, all labeled, so just make this car throughout here throughout my whole series here guys you're gonna hear me say serviceable and be able to diagnose because it's inevitable it's going to happen maybe this car sits in the humidity for five years uh maybe it sits in dry storage for you know a decade you never know there's always going to be a time where you have to diagnose your own work or diagnose somebody else's so this is what i like to do uh let me mention also i let the wires stay really long we could crimp this up really short i do that in my custom builds but when it's a standard wire setup, this is gonna be really long. And what I'm going to do is just nicely fold it up just like this. I'm gonna zip tie it up real clean looking. Then I'm gonna put it underneath the dash. It's gonna be very easy to identify those wires go to this, these wires go to that. And I'll show you all that when I get to that point. But uh, always think about organization and clean wires the whole time. And longer links is just fine. Now, what I like about gauges is you're able to take them out while you're working on the car and sit them on your lap and diagnose the wiring right there on your lap. So my gauge wires are always long on customs or uh, uh, standard wire setups. This one is just a little bit longer than what I probably would have on a custom. I probably would have shortened it up a little bit, but uh, this is fine. It's quick and it's going to end up being really organized. So let's keep moving on. Oh, what I was going to say next here, this is very simple that we need to hook up still. Uh, let's see, uh, 
left and right turn signals, then high beam indicator. Now on my dash, this is a custom dash. Uh, it's all handmade and these gauges, I'll show you a couple pictures of how the, the dash is made. And we have these aftermarket indicator lights. So this is a blinker green. This is a blinker green here. Blue in the middle is a high beam indicator. Typical stuff that you guys need to uh, register a car, right? So we're going to wire that stuff in here, even though it didn't have that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, make this really nice because it's going to get a GM column. And uh, we want to have all these indicators on the dash. Pretty, pretty simple, right? Now I got all of these from Cali Rod. I'll put a link down in the description. I'll put a link at the bottom of the screen. But this allows you guys to put these lights into your hot rod. Maybe you can shine them at the floor because certain ones are pretty bright. So you can shine them at the floor at nighttime. You can see it blinking at the floor. The daytime, you can hear the click. Or you can have it out in the open just like this so you can see it visibly. A lot of cool things you can do with these lights. Drill a hole, put it in. It's good to go. And uh, big shout out to Cali Rod. I like to support mom and pop shops. I like to build as much as I possibly can on old hot rod with local American made mom and pop shops. Cause there are a lot of guys out there right now supplying hot rod parts, uh, electrical components that are made here in America and they're owned by, you know, four or five people actually run it. That's the kind of people I want to give my money to. So I'm going to start giving shout outs to places like that, that I use. So, um, yeah, let's continue wiring this. And, uh, after I get my high beams in there, let's do the steering column. All right, guys, let's get the steering column wired up for our Haywire wiring harness. Now, since the customer is gonna be putting their own column in it, uh, we already agreed that he is going to put in a GM column. So I have one of my columns sitting here that was on the shelf, and I'm going to use my connector to wire it up. Um, there is two different GM style connectors. You're gonna have to measure them. Uh, I think we have a three and seven eighths, then a four and a quarter. Don't quote me exactly, but three and seven eighths is what this one is. This is the one that I always end up using. The other one's a little bit larger. Uh, those are the two GM options that I am aware of, aware of and that I use. And it's very simple to go from haywire harness to this connector. They give you the two different connectors here. Here's what they look like. These are the female sides of the connectors. So they give you the two different connectors. I'm gonna use a smaller one because that's what I have. It's the three and seven eighths. And I don't remember what size this is. Um, I don't have a ruler here, but if you guys are checking it out or on your own, you'll figure it out uh, by measuring one. It's either one or the other. Now all their wires, which is super nice, is already crimped and ready to go here on the ends. All we're gonna have to do is correspond which wires which, oops, correspond which wires which, and just push the prong through the connector and it's gonna clip in, in, uh, in place. Now, one thing to think of, if you make a mistake, it takes a special tool to actually pry these out of there without damaging them. Uh, be careful, take your time, make sure you put it in the right spot. But if you make a mistake, I would recommend either using a really, really fine pick, steel pick, or just buying the tools, because we're talking about like $8 worth of tools uh, to do this accurately. So it's up to you. Now I have my wiring diagram for Haywire out. And it's pretty straightforward. And they give you a definition of what color goes where for either one of the connectors. And the connectors are labeled in the pictures. The connector is labeled here on the connector. So let's say P, what is P? White, brake light switch. P is labeled there. White, brake light switch goes there. And we can see on the end, white, brake light switch is the same on the column. So it's nice. Uh, Haywire uses the GM colors. Don't go off with just the colors, but that color on their harness is going to match the color on my uh, steering column harness. So couldn't be any easier than that, guys. Let's go ahead and push these in and get this uh, connector going. So one of the ways that I like to do this is just get my connector out. And they're all going to line up because this cutout rides inside that slot pretty straightforward. And as I'm reading my definition... And I'm double checking my steering column to make sure those colors on the column are correct. 
Um, I It's been a very long time since I've ran into those colors not actually matching and working. So, but don't rely on just that. Look up your definitions and do it by definition, of course. Now we're gonna get up in here and get these in place. M is yellow left rear turn signal. Yellow left rear turn signal. And let's see if I can push this in the wrong way and see what happens. So, it's hitting the stop there. It's not going in. I flip it around. It's going to go in easily. So don't force it. Clip. It's clipped in spot in place. So we got our connector started there. That looks very nice. Very nice and organized professional so far. L is next. L, purple, turn signal power. Purple, turn signal power. Clip. Gotta love that. Super simple. K, brown, hazard power. And all the wires are labeled to hazard power. Clip. J is next. J, dark blue, turn signal. So that's going to have two on there because front and back. Front turn signal, rear turn signal. None of these should be forced. Clip, clip right in the place. Next is H, light blue, left turn signal. So that one should have two on it also. And it skips one because of the connectors there, the actual big connectors there. Pull on each one. Make sure it doesn't pull out, guys. You need to do that on every connection that you make. Then the very last one should be the ground. Black. Ground uh, for the horn. Horn button, okay? So next thing I'm going to do now is put me a couple nice zip ties right here. So these are all held together. And at no point in time, while this is underneath the column, is it going to pull on just one wire if it pulls at all? Hopefully it doesn't pull at all, but if it does, it's going to be pull them all together. So we just get a, a little strength there. Hopefully it doesn't pull ever, but that's the kind of stuff you got to be thinking about, guys. That if it does happen, is it going to hurt anything or not? And if we link them all together, they'll have more strength. There we go. We'll just outfit zip ties all the way up back to the main harness there now when it comes to running the headlights tail lights all that kind of stuff the wires will be labeled inside the harness super easy when you run wires to the back think about fuel pump third brake light where is your dome light and how is it wired in does it go down the a pillar does it go down the back uh, and try to figure out if you're going to be running the rear section on the frame or if you're going to be running it through the car so a bunch of cars are different i can't give you uh, a complete explanation of what your car is just because I don't know what it is. But those are your options. Everywhere where that wire passes through steel, make sure you have a rubber grommet in there or a bulkhead connector, which is uh, makes the whole kit a little bit more complicated when it comes to the level of wiring. So that's up to you if you want to use something like that or not. But uh, the headlights and taillights are the same when it comes to, you're going to have individual wires for the blinkers in the front and the back, parking lights, so let's think uh, the license plate lights and the normal running lights in the back, they're all gonna come from uh, one wire. So when you come in to the tail light for that parking light somewhere, you're gonna have to split that wire off and take that wire also to the other tail light to give you running lights on both. There's not two running light wires going to the rear. Then also with that uh, license plate light, you're gonna have to add that in. But this kit does have a third brake light wire that's uh, by itself it's isolated so that's great headlights is the same thing running lights they're both going to use one wire there's going to be a high beam both off of one wire so if you have a car with four lights or two lights in the front uh keep that in mind that you're going to have to split those wires yourself uh, which is super common practice even uh, the manufacturer wiring harnesses if you look at the headlight plug connector 
uh, that connector is gonna have a wire in and a wire out to go over to the other headlight. That's just how they did it back in the day too. That's how we do it now. Uh, just a little bit better connections and <laughs> way better insulation on the wires. So that's awesome. Outside from that, there's not too much more to be said. Make sure you have really good grounds. I test all my grounds with the voltage meter. Uh, we have a ground coming in for the gauges. Wiring up the gauges is a little bit more complicated. I'll have to make another video for that. But as an example, we have a ground wire coming up to the gauges. I'm going to test that uh, ground wire and I'm gonna ohm test it somewhere on the body, the steering column bolt, something like that to make sure that that wire has a good ground. So everything that is a ground Always double check with a voltmeter and ohmmeter to make sure you have a good ground, low resistance, and that it actually exists. Because uh, uh, not checking stuff like this, guys, when you get to the final end product, you're going to be like, well, why doesn't this work? And you're going to be diagnosing so many things, and it comes down to you didn't scratch off enough paint uh, on this one ground strap or this ground wire. Trust me, I've been there, so I'm just letting you guys know uh, the struggling pains to look for those up front and not at the very end. Now, I really appreciate all you guys uh, watching my wiring series. I was not expecting them to be a huge hit, but now my wiring electrical series all have the highest views on my YouTube channel. So I thought I'd just keep hitting it a little bit harder, not for the views, but since that's showing me that's what you guys want to see. So thank you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't seen all my wiring videos, I think I'm at like 20 something different videos right now. So go through my playlist, guys. I have a bunch of different playlists for a bunch of different uh, flatheads, wiring, sheet metal, all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So check it out, get that information that you need. And once you get it, get out in your garage and get your ship together.